Welcome back, everyone. Um, I think John gave a really good intro this morning on Darwin Core fields, specific fields you might want to use to be uh, universally consistent within a data set or within the biodiversity informatics framework. Um, and mapping your data fields to the Darwin Core data fields is an endeavor of its own. But then once you have your data fields set up, what are you putting within each one of those fields? And this is where we sort of come to the concept of using additional data sets, resources, authority files for how to enter data in a controlled vocabulary. So what do we mean by authority files? If you talk to a bunch of people, you might get a couple different answers, but basically we're talking about um, a table of controlled terms for a data element. Um, these controlled terms help prevent database users from adding non-standard data. Town yesterday said, made a comment about um, garbage in, garbage out. This is sort of a, using authority files in a bunch of different ways sort of helps prevent some of that. Using an authority file ensures consistency across an institution or even an entire discipline, depending on how wide um, you're looking at. And we're talking about anything from a simple controlled vocabulary for a single term or a table of information to assist with choosing the correct term for that field. It could also be within, it could be within your database um, itself or it could be an external reference um, or a publication maintained by another institution or authority file to which you're referring. And this sort of ties into databasing when we're going to start getting into um, collections and label information because as you're entering data on a label, you, are, you have your data fields and you have your specimen labels and what is on a specimen label doesn't necessarily correspond exactly to um, the data structure or the data elements or the authority files within your control vocabulary. So how do you enter the information? Do you put exactly what's there or do you convert it? Uh, my favorite example for the New York Botanical Garden Herbarium is type status. Um, we've been databasing all of our types. We have about 150,000 type specimens across vascular plants and um, fungi, lichens, bryophytes. Uh, we're part of the Global Plants Initiative and part of that, uh, part of the data export for that, you have to map your um, type status terms to 16 um, 16 terms within the controlled vocabulary for the Global Plants Initiative. But as you start looking at all the available type statuses within the database, I found over a hundred different matches. And these were very similar but also different um, statuses. So holotype could be in there as holotypist, typist is of often used, um, cotype, various ways to just spell or use punctuation within a field. Uh, question marks, dashes, um, probably a type. We also had probably a holotype, probably not a type, um, possible type. These are all very subjective terms um, that don't really correspond to an official type status. Uh, you could you have the same term put in two different ways, isoneotype with a dash or just isoneotype. Microslide of type, microslide is being more of a specimen status than a type status, or unpublished name, which is relevant, but it's not a type status in and of itself. If you use control terms, you force your users to then standardize one of these to a controlled set of vocabulary. So on a, just a single term basis, using a controlled vocabulary makes things very easy up front because as we're exporting data, I've had to go back and clean up all of these fields. Uh, John mentioned a lot of these. Um, when you want to use international standards like Darwin Core, Within certain fields, there are recommended vocabularies. As you're going through your mapping, you might have noticed that a lot of the terms had recommended vocabularies. So I've listed all the recommended terms for life stage, but many of the other fields um, that you were just going through this morning also had recommended vocabularies. So as you're developing your own data structure, you might want to pay attention to which of those fields had a, re a recommended vocabulary and try to use those or embed those as a lookup list in your own database. Now, when we're talking about data sets and resources, um, these are things that are a bit more complicated than just a simple like lookup list. We're talking about usually geography, people, um, and scientific names. Uh, geography, 
often is a single term, but it's also part of, a, of an established hierarchy. So you're not just using, um, maybe you don't just have country and your second and third political boundaries uh, separate. You could tie them together as a hierarchy. So you could start at the lowest level at a, at a city and have the rest of the political hierarchy automatically fill. So that vocabulary is a bit more complicated. You might also have a thesaurus to historical places. A lot of older labels have a lot of information that um, wouldn't necessarily be standard. So if you're using only standard countries, you may have labels that um, are no longer, names on labels that are no longer in use. People are a lot of fun. Um, people like to change the way they put their names on labels. Um, so authority files for collectors and determiners and authors should also um, have inf pieces of information that helps you choose between them. So birth dates and death dates, uh, main collection dates, collection countries, uh, abbreviations, specialties, so that you know if you're looking at um, someone with J. Smith, who's um, on a different label, you might have three different matches for J. Smith in your database. And by having an authority file with all this extra information, it could help you choose which is the correct one for your specimen. <coughs> and then scientific names. Town sort of introduced this uh, right before the break, where uh, you might have a list of valid names for your collection, but that could also include synonymy, orthographic variants, publication information, anything else that'll help you determine uh, what is the correct name if that is being used on the label. More specifically with geography, why do we run into problems? Uh, changing political boundaries, these are happening all the time still. S for example, Czechoslovakia, you could have uh, older labels. So you have a big political entity that has been now split into two separate ones, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. It's happened in Ethiopia. Germany got bigger, it combined from East Germany and West Germany and got um, to a larger, so that one's actually a little bit more easy to standardize. And then name changes, um, depending on where you are coming from and where the collector originated from, they may be using out-of-date terms um, rather than the accepted terms within the country. Um, Myanmar and Burma is a good example, Mumbai and Bombay, uh, even within um, small cities within the US. So the question is, when you're entering the label data and you're standardizing it, do you just enter it as it is, or do you then use what's the current political boundaries? And also names in different languages. Um, in English, I would say French Guiana, but obviously that's not the correct way um, people in the country would use it, uh, being in French. But there are also international organizations, like the International Organization for Standardization. John mentioned this earlier. Um, ISO 